Welcome back. You know, February is American Heart Month, and no matter who you are, you most likely know somebody who has been affected by heart disease. Perhaps you yourself are dealing with it. Dr. Paula Pinell Saez is here now with some important things that you need to know to keep you and your loved ones safe from heart disease. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, is it true that heart disease is on the rise in women? Absolutely. Right. It's, the, it's not only on the rise, but importantly, it's the leading cause of death among women. Kills Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I would think I just uh, the, with all the commercials and, and all of the causes you see out there that, that people think that breast cancer is or various types of cancer, but right. it's, it's heart disease. Right. It's number Absolutely. one killer. More than, in fact, all cancers combined. So, Interesting. Yeah, and the numbers are stunning. They're jolting, in fact, but they're important because they highlight the importance of prevention of early detection and it makes this sort of a conversation an opportunity to bring right. more awareness to the problem really um, important. Let's talk about prevention a little yeah. bit because we've seen uh, this obesity epidemic in this country it just continues uh, to rise and, right. and our diet obviously one of the leading causes of this. Right, absolutely. And it's, we're talking about women in particular. Um, and women tend to be multitaskers, juggle more, take care of their families, work as much in the home as outside the home. And through all of that, it's harder, I think more women find it harder to carve out time to take care of themselves, to, to do the exercise, to do the, the hard work that it takes to stay healthy. Right. Um, and I often tell my patients, you know, you really have to first take care of yourself in order to be there to take care of others. You need to carve out that time. When does heart disease first begin to manifest itself? When can you first see, as a physician, signs of heart disease? Well, there's not a particular age at which you become at risk. It certainly varies in terms of, in fact, in terms of risk factors and your family history, um, but it can present at any age. And the key is really knowing what the symptoms are so that especially women can be more attuned to those symptoms, which in women can often be milder. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we've heard that there are differences between uh, the are. symptoms of, of heart disease in men and, and women. What are the differences? Right. So in both, the most common symptom is still some form of chest discomfort. But in women, that chest discomfort may be mild. It may feel more like indigestion or vary, be more in the jaw, feel, be much milder, or even not the most prominent symptom that, that a woman may have. It may just be shortness of breath or profound fatigue. Mm -hmm. And the key is if you have these symptoms and you have either heart disease, diabetes, or really any risk factor for heart disease, if these symptoms come and they don't resolve within minutes, you really need to seek urgent attention. And mm -hmm. that means 911. Uh I, I've heard that, that uh, in women, often the smaller, narrower vascular right. areas are affected right. more so than men? Absolutely. So a woman with a heart attack is less likely to have the critical narrowings of the major arteries of the heart. More often they have diffuse involvement of all the arteries and the small branch arteries. Um, with that, they're less likely to suffer significant heart function with a heart attack. So you hear both those things. There's a tendency on a gut level to want to reassure women that you had a small heart attack, you have mild heart disease. But in truth, even accounting for severity, age, and all the other risk factors, women are still, that same woman with that presentation is still more likely in the year following a heart attack to have a second heart attack and to die of heart disease. Interesting. So still, again, a, a different form of heart disease, one that we don't understand quite as well, Some, one that science is evolving. We, as we learn more, we may be able to tailor heart disease treatment more to variations of heart disease. Right now, we treat heart disease similarly in men and women. Mm -hmm. And the data that we have does suggest that even these variants of heart disease respond similarly. Yep. But it's, it's importantly, a very aggressive form of heart disease, just different than it mm -hmm. is in men. We hear so much about cholesterol levels. When you go to the doctor for a right. standard checkup, it's, it's, it's ordinarily a part of the routine, Absolutely. good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Right. How closely do you have to pay attention to that? Very closely. And it, um, everyone over the age of 20 should really know your cholesterol. The cholesterol that we most focus on is the bad cholesterol, the LDL. And that ideally should be below 100. Now, that's ideal, and it does not mean that everyone with a cholesterol above 100 should be on medication for mm -hmm. it. A lot depends on your risk factors and how much you have, it, what you have, what you can work on in terms of your diet and exercise, which should always be first line and really part and parcel of any treatment for prevention. Now, how well do those medications work, the, the cholesterol medications? The medications we have are very strong. They can work to lower your cholesterol aggressively, but again, they work in parallel to the harder work of exercise and diet. You, you don't, you can't get away from that. That really yeah. always has to be a piece uh, and there's of what been, you do. There's a little bit of controversy over uh, some of those medications. I know that, uh, I forget which the, what the brand name was now, but one of them was pulled off the market. It had great promise and lots of advertising dollars and, and doctors were pushing it. It turned out to be ineffective. 
Um, so which, which are the ones that are effective? Which right. should you seek out? Right. The, the most tried and true cholesterol-lowering medication is in the statin family. Um, I don't so I want to name, name okay. brand names, but it's the Lipitor, Crestor, uh, Zocor. That family of medications have the most proven record, both in terms of lowering the cholesterol and preventing a heart attack. And, and uh, heart disease and they, and they work death. better in conjunction with exercise and a absolutely, good diet. Absolutely, absolutely. Nothing replaces the exercise that you need to do. And the key is that it's not um, it's not training for a marathon. It's not uh, it's often intimidating for a lot of patients who don't exercise regularly to get out there, but it starts with a simple walking program. Really 20 minutes four to five times a week and then you gradually increase the intensity of it and that benefit in terms of your blood pressure your weight your cholesterol your glucose control if you're diabetic is huge I imagine as a physician you've probably heard uh, countless countless times from patients who were offered lots of warning signs along the way your cholesterol level is too high you really need right. to do something about it you're not getting exercise you, you've got diabetes all these things people tend to ignore say oh, I'll get to it later then boom the big heart attack comes and they say gosh I wish I had listened to what you had said right does and that the, happen a lot it does happen a lot and the flip side is also that people who are healthy doing the right things often don't know their cholesterol don't um, haven't managed it to the point that they know exactly what their risk is. So even if you are active and healthy, it's important to know your numbers and to be uh, meticulous about your cholesterol management, both uh, because you may be underestimating your risk. You may presume that you're mm -hmm. eating right, you're doing the right things, and you're safe, but you really need to know right. know your numbers and know your risk. Talk about it with your doctor. We're out of time, but I want to hit one more yeah. point really, really quickly. If you do feel those warning signs of a heart attack coming on, what do you need to do? You need to call 911. Really, don't don't have a family member take you in the hospital. That's the worst idea. If something were to happen on the road, okay. God forbid. I've heard uh, grab an aspirin. Oh, chew sorry. It. Yes, absolutely. You have an aspirin at home. Chew the aspirin. Um, call nine one one. Okay. All right. Great advice, absolutely. Dr. Paula Pennell, Sias. We really appreciate it. Thank you Thank very, you much. very much. Good Bill. to see you. Good to meet.